Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33 WHPR, Comcast 90 in Detroit in Oakland County, and I am celebrating the day. I am celebrating, number one, because I see all these new cameras, which you all will be the benefit of, will benefit from in just a week or so. I am excited because good things are happening for our people in the city of Detroit. And a part of that will be theater. You know we love to entertain and we love to be entertained. And today, and also you can pick us up at www.tv33whpr.com on the World Wide Web. But like I said, entertainment is going to be very important and theater is going to be very important. A lot of people go to plays by Tyler Perry and some other uh, producers that a kind of outlandish, but some people say, "Well, that's my life and all this stuff." But there are other there are other types of theater also, and we have some very talented people here in Michigan, here in the Detroit area. And I, today's show is going to be kind of twofold. I'm going to introduce you to Miss Yolanda Jack. Good morning, Yolanda. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, I'm just wonderful because anytime I can talk about theater, I feel great. I agree. And we are going to talk to her. She's a recent graduate of Wayne State University's theater program. And also, I have an interview with an icon in theater in Detroit and is keeping up the Concept East concept. And you know about Concept East. It goes back to the 70s. And a lot of great actors came out of Concept East. And that is Mr. David Rambo. And David, we interviewed him because he has a complaint he has filed against Wayne State University as far as their black theater program is concerned. And I said I'd put his views on. And I interviewed him off campus out of the studio, I interviewed him at a Tim Hortons down on Jefferson Avenue, and he ha meets down there every week. I think it's about one o'clock, I think. I think you're right. Yeah, I think it's about one o'clock, this Concept East um, program, because they're trying to heighten the profile of black theater, and not only that, black um, people who are involved in Wayne State's theater program, he thinks that it should outreach more to the community. Now, even when I was teaching at Southfield, I took plays out into the community because we had the benefit. I could do plays in school, but there's some places that couldn't have plays, so we wanted to expose them that. Yes. And more, the more our young people are exposed to it, the more they'll know about it. But Yolanda, let's first talk about you before we're going to go to David's interview. Yolanda, are you from Detroit? I was born and raised right here in the city really? of Detroit. Really? Yep. Went to Cass Tech. And of course, Miss McCormick. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. And uh, when I left high school, I, my first undergrad experience was at Howard University. Oh, really? Yes. I spent almost all uh, my four years there. But when my fourth year came, I did my internship in New Jersey and uh, got Where hired. My, uh, Crossroads Theater. Oh, yeah. I've yeah, been Rick there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. What beautiful company. Uh, and I got hired after my internship. And I uh, fell in love and got married. And uh, my husband and I realized that Detroit needed uh, their daughter to come back home and help build up the theater departments and uh, theater world here in the city of Detroit. Oh, so. you will, because, uh, you know, people know on my mind, theater is always on my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I do film, I do a lot of different things, but theater, I was just telling someone yesterday, theater is my top pick. It is, I agree. There's nothing like it when you have the audience right there and you are sharing this experience that no one will ever see again, even if you do the same show tomorrow or did it yesterday. No that two days are alike. Exactly. So this experience is unique and will never be again. It's now and it's that's there's nothing like it. There's nothing it's electric. I love it. I know. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just digging everything you said. Well, we're going to because you're going to do a monologue for us. I am so excited. <laughs> I am so excited. But before that, let's talk to David Rambo because he's an activist. Let's uh, run that DVD and everybody listen tight so you can hear it because there's noise in the background. With an icon in theater and television. 
in the city of Detroit. He's a true Detroiter from the heart, and he's a man who I've, I've admired for many, many years. Mr. David Rambo. Hello. How are you? All right. That's good. That's good. Now, David, you have the Concept East group also. Now, many of you will remember that Concept East was a great theater here, and it's had, it had three renaissances here in Detroit. And David, can you tell us about it? Right. We started, I believe, in uh, 1962, and then we the group moved. It started at 401 East Adams, and then ultimately, in one of its uh, reiterations, it moved to 60 East Harbor. So that um, at Concept East, we had three waves uh, that lasted approximately three years each, where a group of interns or acolytes came in and, and grew and then moved on to other horizons. Yes, and uh, Woody King used to work with that. Woody King is uh, the artistic director or president of the New Federal Theater in New York now, and many others went on to a lot of fame and got their training ground right at Concept East, isn't right. that correct? That's, that's right. Okay, and Wayne State, some of them went to Wayne State University at the time, right? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, there we, I mean, we were young people back then, and some of them went to the local university. Yes. Now, Wayne State has called himself having a black theater program, but you and Reuben Wilson have lodged a complaint with the university, the Office of Equal Opportunity, isn't that correct? That's right. And can you tell us the basis, tell the audience the basis of this complaint? For a number of years, they have been neglecting uh, the black theater program. In fact, it was never, even in, when we agitated for it in 1962, uh, picketed and leafleted uh, the theaters to obtain the program, uh, even in our settlement, uh, they did not fully implement our negotiations. Uh, so that after that point, uh, they did ap appoint a, uh, a black theater program director. Uh, and it limped along at, at, at a certain level for a number of years. But recently, uh, in 2000, roughly 2010, uh, they changed over from a uh, faculty member to a, a person, uh, a black director who was just in for specific plays. And then, and then wouldn't put the, the person who was running the program on a tenure track at the university. So uh, after sending them the information that I sent to you uh, to make them aware of their transgressions, uh, they did not respond. And that's over a period of two years. So at that point, we decided to uh, take a more aggressive action. So we filed our complaint. OK, so the complaint was a statement of what we should have as far as a black theater program at the university. It's an opening, it's an opening statement. There's that and more. Okay. Okay, well I'm gonna go through some of the issues. One of the things that is wanted is black tenured faculty in the Wayne State University Theater Department. Because I know on their website they don't have one black face as far as faculty, right? Right, right. Certainly not in theater. They do have somebody in dance, but they don't have anybody in theater. Uh, now, uh, this August, they've hired a new person, Alicia Hines from Elizabeth City uh, State University out of North Carolina. And she started in August. But she does not know the theater department. So that as a consequence, she is, uh, she is not aware of the situation here from an, uh, an empirical point of view. Though I have shared all the data with her, uh, and she has uh, been receptive. Uh, 
so that I have outlined some of the basic things, steps that they need to do. In tenured faculty, and I don't mean simply one, okay, tenured faculty, plural, should be a part of the Black Theater Program at Wayne State University's Theater Department. Okay, you also want black playwrights produced on the Bonstell stage, the Hillbury stage, and the studio theater. Now they've had, uh, I think that most of the black plays are on the Bonstell Virtually stage. Virtually all of them. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the past they've had some on, in the far distant past. Yes. They've had some on the studio stage. Right. They have some on, they have had uh, some on the studio uh, stage, but th that is viewed as really a training stage, an yeah. introductory stage. Yeah. There are two major stages, uh, the Bonstell and the Hillbury Classic. So the Hillbury really hasn't had any contemporary black plays. They haven't had any recently. They've had one or two over a period of 50 years. Oh yeah. And that is grossly inadequate. Yeah, I worked, in fact, I think the name of the play was King Junior that I worked on at the uh, Hillbury. Um, black theater classes should be a regular part of the Wayne State Theater curriculum. Oh, yes, I mean, uh, that's, that's elementary. Yes, it's very elementary. Uh, yes. Now, there, are, uh, there is a 42% black population in Wayne County. Southeastern Michigan, so that uh, to begin to have that as a goal in terms of the employment of black instructors, they would have substantially more black theater instructors in their uh, department. Right, absolutely. Uh, you also want a researched history of people who have taught there, people who have gone on from there as students um, to make their mark. Absolutely. You see, if you don't, if you don't have, know where you've been, you don't know where you're going, and you don't appreciate whose shoulders you stand on. So that Wayne State, and for that matter, the Black Theater uh, Program Directors, have consciously failed to document the history of Black Theater at Wayne State University. In fact, when we had, uh, when I found a complaint with the OEO, the uh, person Winston Sh Winston Shines, who took the complaint. Uh, remarked that when he uh, tried to research university files, he could find very little uh, history. And so that is, that is part of their uh, methodology to keep black people in, in, in our history invisible in this particular uh, uh, aspect of the overall educational process at Wayne. And, we are in, and we're going to change that. Absolutely. More outreach to students, counselors, and teachers in the urban high school throughout the state of Michigan. Oh, yes. About Wayne State's Black Theater Program. Oh, for sure. You see, you have to look at theater in the educational process as a four-tiered process. You go to high school, college, community theater, and professional theater. And they just, they just focus on a very narrow segment of collegiate theater. And at that rate, it's only one one show a year at the Bonstell and maybe one show a year at the, at the studio. Well, you can't really develop anybody in terms of their skill or craft if you have such a limitation. Nor do you have a, uh, uh, an educational institution that looks in the broadest sense of what education is all about. Education is not limited uh, to the collegiate experience. It, it, it starts in elementary school and it progresses right on through if we're looking to educate a community. They, are, they have never demonstrated any, any recognition of that. And in fact, they're derelict, obviously derelict, in their responsibilities to do that simply as educators at the collegiate level. In fact, when uh, the representative for the university president, the new black president, uh, sent a letter back about uh, my complaint before it got to the EEO, uh, she just sent back a, a one-page warmed-over press release. And I told her, and, and obviously sent it to the university president, that uh, 
that they should do better, that they are a university. And she was representing the president of the university, and they award degrees. So that I, I thought they ought to do a little bit better. So I asked her to please, please do better when, when you respond. In point of fact, I'm going to hold the OEO office uh, to a high standard right. of research and response. Right, right, right. So also, when you talk about black members to the Hillbury, they've had, you know, some, and I've had former students who are have been in the Hillbury, but it's not, it's like so minor, so few. Yes. You mean to tell me they can't accept more than that? Or they don't think that black people could do classic, so-called classic plays? Oh. They really don't want black folk in the Hillbury. I mean, that's I, plain. I mean, I, I mean let, I let's not quibble five, about that. I, no, you can't. Uh, if you look over their 50-year history, they've had, you can count them on the fingers of, yes, without taking off your shoes and socks. Right. So that uh, uh, we've observed that, we've watched them do that, and uh, it's totally inadequate. They know it, we know it, and well, we're going to deal with it. A few years ago, Ruben Santiago Hudson, he came back here and he spoke and everything because he was in the Hillbury. That's when I met him. Yeah. And he said that Wayne State basically didn't do anything for him with the exception of Vaughn. Wayne State didn't do anything to help him, to push him like they did uh, his white contemporary. And that still exists today. Mm -hmm. And I think they should be held accountable for that. And that is what we're what we're attempting to do. Okay, another um, aspect is career counseling for black theater majors and minors. Because a lot of people, in fact, I have a former student from um, he was in my senior, he was a play in a play in senior year. He was in several plays, as a matter of fact, that I had while I was teaching. And he just did a play, he did that Red of Brown Water at the Bonstel, I mean, yeah, Bonstel. the Bonstel. And he thinks he's ready to go out to New York already. Well, I mean, he can think whatever he wants. And, and he can go to New York. And New York will chew him up and send him back home. I mean, it's part of the learning experience. Right. Uh, and you can learn the easy way or you can learn the hard way. Right, right, right. But the career counseling would have. Especially it doesn't exist. It, it, it would have. I know it is non-existent right. there. And in fact, they don't, even when they try to counsel, they, whites, because they don't know anything about the black experience in theater or the black community, they can't give counseling, and whatever they try to do is worthless. So that I had this discussion with a recent black graduate of Wayne State University's program, Yolanda Jack, who is a who is an actor and works at the Museum of African American History, and she testified to that that her counselor, a white counselor, you know, was worthless in terms of uh, career guidance. So we're addressing that obviously, obviously as well. And it should be addressed because a lot of these students go out and they're just grabbing at straws. They're, and they have no, there should be a pipeline if they do decide to leave town or their other maybe graduates of the program or somebody that they can reach out to, but they don't have anything. It stops right there at their door. Unfortunately, now over the years, I've always referred local Detroiters interested in theater to Woody King Jr. at New Federal right. because of, of our relationship. And he has always been very gracious with right. newcomers who arrive in New York uh, without any background on what's going on. Right. And he has helped several of them segue into New York theater. But that is a community response which is totally valid. But the university has no relationship, the theater department, with any blacks in any, any community theaters be it New York or Los Angeles or St. Louis or Atlanta or Detroit for that matter. So as a consequence, they cannot give any information because they don't possess any information. Right. And during Black History Month, you want an exhibit uh, of blacks in theater and so forth. Could you expand upon that? Right. We uh, recently, in June, we held a, uh, an exhibit at the Museum of African American History. 
uh, a, uh, a coalition with five black organizations. Concept Peace, Museum, Troy Public Library, the Zelia Hackley Collection, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And, and uh, we had a two-day conference, uh, one day Saturday at the International Institute and Sunday at the museum. Uh, now, we invited Wayne State to, to participate in the Sunday part, and they did, they did uh, in, in a minor way, in a, in a uh, initiatory fashion, participate. And so we thanked them for that. But it was just the first step. And we expect them to participate next year when we do it again in June and expand their participation to a much higher level. So it was more of a token. Uh, it was a start. It was a token. Okay. But it wasn't, I mean, you have to start somewhere. And we, we, we invited them, and they started. Now once they've got their feet wet, so to speak, we expect them to do a full-blown participation next year. Do you know that there's a saying that whoever controls the arts controls a lot of the community? And I believe that totally. And I believe that we cannot be left out and it seems like it's happening, it's even happening more so now with the advent of everything that's going on downtown, which is, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, people building and trying to make things better, but it needs to be better throughout the community. In New York, you know, you can find a play on, I mean, on different corners, in the, in the so-called ghettos, you, you find theater everywhere. It's designated to certain places and churches. Well, frankly, I'm not concerned about New York. Well, or LA. I'm, no, I'm, I'm concerned I'm, about Detroit I'm just and Wayne State University. The reason and that's why my I, focus and target. The reason and we're going to deal with them in an effective fashion uh, this year, this this fall. We are going to implement. We're going to implement some discussions, and we do hope that they'll they'll be receptive because we're looking at a win-win situation with them. We don't want to see them injured in any fashion. No. Uh, despite the fact that they have injured black folk for the past 50 years with their uh, uh, insufficient educational process, but we're initiating an open response, and this is part of it, and that's why we appreciate you doing this interview, is that we are telling them through you and our public, your audience, that changes have got to be made, and uh, like Eric Garner said in New York, when he was brutally murdered. It ends today. It ends today. Well, here's the thing. This is why I brought up New York. Only because of the psyche of the people who are in New York exposed to it. My, my nephew, who graduated from Erasmus High in New York, he was able to go to theater all the time. All the time. Anyway, he lived in Brooklyn. But he could go to theater anytime. Our people, our theater, the theater here is relegated to a certain few days and then it's, it's, it's gone. Sure. And that's what I'm talking about. I would like to see any time I want to see theater, I want it to be the theater that I want to see. In that case, when I, when you talk about that, I think of black theater. And to that extent, that's yes. why we got to have more black plays at Wayne yes. State University. Yes. And, and more black faculty to implement those plays. Absolutely. 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 And uh, are there some ways that people can get involved? Oh, uh, for sure. They can, they can work with us. They can, get in, they can check us out on uh, Facebook.com, Concept East Theater. We have a website. Uh, and they can communicate with us through the website. Okay. And do you have any other organizational things where people can just come up and sit in and be active? You know, people sure. are activists. You know, there are some activists out there. Yeah, there are a few. Uh, they can come join us on Saturday for our sessions, which will uh, be implemented after we finish this interview, the Saturday Irregulars. Uh, from 1 to 3 every Saturday, we meet in the community across the street from Bell Island. Okay. 
participate, absolutely. Because there's so much, and we have some gentlemen here. Would you like to ex tell us their names? I uh, know, I would like for, the, for them, if they want, to come in and, and, and do their analysis of well, theater, black theater. Uh, like Mr. Mariso has a, a strong history of, of theater uh, at 60 East Harbor, and uh, a strong theatrical background in terms of uh, dance theater. So uh, I would certainly be remiss if I did not, if I did not, <laughs> I do not wish to be remiss. We'll be back in a second. Right now I'm with Eddie Mariso, who has an extensive background in Detroit theater and dance theater. Mr. Mariso, would you tell us a little about it? Well, uh, I, I started in theater uh, my interest started with my involvement in concert at East uh, on the East Adams. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the move to 60 Harper. Uh, that move, the move to uh, attempt to uh, uh, expand it uh, to the level where we could provide uh, a community at large with uh, theater experiences, not only as a uh, viewer, but also uh, training in the uh, technical parts, uh, like uh, lighting, uh, video, because you need everybody, you need your tech people, your actors, and so forth. It's more than just actors. Exactly. And of course, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to, uh, uh, to be the exception of the uh, uh, Jesse Desco, uh, uh, who's director, Kevin Rico, who was my wife. And that was uh, Mr. David Rambo and Mr. Mariso, Eddie Mariso, I think it was Eddie, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and um, talking about the theater program We are and some of the complaints that they had. Well, we, um, I'm sorry about the music in the background, the people wouldn't turn down the music, but we did the best we could, and I, I thank them for coming on. And back to Yolanda, now you were in, 
you finished up at Wayne State, I right? Did. Mm-hmm. And were you in any plays? And I did one production of um, on the Bonstell stage in the Red and Brown Water. Yeah, I saw that. That was a fun show. I was um, Mama Moja and right. the woman that reminds me. I you. remember. That was a fun I show. Remember, <laughs> I remember. I remember. I was sitting in the first row, so I, I remember. And... Um, and Dante yes, and so and, forth. And uh, there was uh, we had such an awesome time working with Aku and getting a chance to get into that story was just an amazing opportunity. Um, for those, some of, there were some of us who had a little bit of history with the Orishas and the gods and names and all of those things, and we were able to use our background, uh, what we knew, and add to the knowledge of the ensemble and that was truly an ensemble production we yeah had it was i had a coup on the show with Wonderful. some of the actors james and dante yeah, yes it was they were on my show and um it was just so full circle for me and mm-hmm. james because i had had james from a freshman in high school He's such and a wonderful then young graduated man. then he graduated and everything and then he went to wayne state and all but you know there are a lot of people who want to young people who want to go into theater and a lot of times their family does not encourage that well it, it wasn't encouraged in my my family either and because in my day there was you didn't see black actors and actresses and so forth that's true working but i were working right and so i decided to teach it and direct and i've been lucky to direct even two shows in new york mm-hmm. uh one in the new federal theater oh wonderful woody yeah. king i call yeah. him woody the king woody <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah yeah <laughs> and so forth but anyway let's kind of get back to um well, I want you to do your monologue first, and then I want to talk about your experiences and what you want to see more of at Wayne State okay. University. Okay. Tell the audience what your monologue's about. It is from uh, Joe Turner's Coming On, one of August Wilson's. Everyone knows August Wilson uh, well uh, in his plays, and it's uh, the character is Martha, Martha Loomis. Oh, wow. Come on, let's go. All right. She says, look to the audience. I didn't leave her motherless Harold. Reverend Tolliver wanted to move the church up north because all of the trouble color folks was having down there. We didn't know what was going to happen to us traveling them roads. We didn't even know who was going to make it up here or not. I left her at my mama so she'd be safe. That was better than having her duck and hide on on those roads. I didn't leave her motherless Harold. I've been looking for you. They told me Joe Turner had you. My whole world split half in two. My whole life shattered. It was like I poured it into a jar that was cracked at the bottom and it leaked all out. When it go like that, there ain't nothing, nothing you can do about it. So, you talking about Henry Thompson's place? Like I'm still gonna be there working the land by myself? How am I gonna do that? It wasn't two months before Henry Thompson kicked me off of his land and I didn't have nowhere to go but to my mama's. I stayed there and waited five years until I woke up one morning and decided that you was dead. Even if you wasn't, you was dead to me. So I killed you in my heart, I buried you, and I mourned you. And I picked up what was left of my life and went on. I was a young woman with life at my beck and I wasn't going to drag you behind me like a sack of cotton. Wow. (laughs) Wow. He he had some tremendous uh, lines in his play. Yes, yes, yes. I got to meet him when Mm -hmm. I saw saw Jitney. Yes. uh, Down in Atlanta. We met for Jitney uh, in New Jersey at uh, at Crossroads Theater in New Brunswick. Just a wonderful person. I love him. And did him. you know he always started his plays out? He always premiered them in Pittsburgh. Yes. Because uh, a friend of mine who passed away a couple of years ago, he was a New York actor, Paul Butler, um, was always in that play. Oh, wow. That he always started. Amazing. And everything. But, I mean, he was gone too soon. It's true. He was just gone and too so soon. And so sad. So sad. And with the young baby at the time, he, his child, his little girl was still quite young when he right. passed away. Right. And his wife, I just felt so badly for the whole family and, and all of us in the theater world to lose such a 
a, a brilliant writer and, and, and brilliant mind, I did a little research on him and found out that he dropped out of high school, August Wilson, yes, and did. utilized the public library so extensively that the librarians got together and gave him a diploma based on his use of the library system there. I thought Isn't that was that amazing. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah. Isn't that fabulous? Just to, to be self uh, de determined in that kind of way. Oh, right, right. Sometimes school can be too slow for you. Yes. I mean, I hate to say it's that. True. I, here, I'm a teacher, mm -hmm. and I'm saying that. Or does it provide? Th there, was, there were people I had to put my clamp on to keep them in school. Yes. Because school was too slow for them. Or it didn't provide what you needed. And then what you try to do, you provide, if you're a teacher who really has some insight into your students, mm -hmm. you try to provide the things that can stimulate them and, and them so there. forth and keep them there because you know those other little credentials they're supposed to have yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But Yolanda, what were your experiences like at Wayne State? At Wayne State, it was... Because you were at Howard. I initially uh, did my undergrad at Howard University, which was my school of choice, and it was an amazing experience. And so to have that... You know, be, Chadwick Boseman went to Howard. Yes, yes. He plays James Brown, and he played Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I think is difficult for me is because I'm comparing the two experiences. At Wayne, it you was... you got to be honest. It, and, and the truth is, at Howard everything that I needed and wanted was there as a student, even though when I changed from acting into theater administration, that's where my degree is in theater administration from Howard. But at Wayne, it was a different environment in that the young people who come to that school um, rely, I guess the way I did, 100% on the faculty and the staff there to give everything and when I'm 18 years old and got that at Howard I was fed much differently than when I was at Wayne uh, the black students at Howard University because uh, there were white students at Howard when I was oh, there of course, yes. but we it was a much different environment we had we felt more connected to one another we were all together uh, working on the projects working on the t crews or whatever at Wayne it seems much more compartmentalized. The actors uh, and the folk who work in tech and those directors, they do connect and collaborate. They have classes together. But it's still, you st I felt, uh, lines of demarcation between. Definitely, definitely. Because, I mean, you know, you have your techies who, mm -hmm. you know, we're the techies. And Everybody always wear to, black. But every, yes, <laughs> always wear black and all of this. And we had that kind of hierarchy in the high school. And then, you know, I've worked on so many shows outside of high school, of course, and they have that. But what the thing is that the administration can do of the theater program is make sure these people co-mingle. Yes. And they they support one another. Yes. And some places, you know, maybe at Wayne State, it wasn't like that everybody was in their own little. Well, we went, we, I would say we share classes together, but even with that, unless you focused your attention on reaching out to people um, unless you were an outgoing person who wanted to say hello and find out, hey, what, should, what are you interested in? What do you like to do? What kind of things are you involved in outside of class? Then you wouldn't have, it wouldn't really be for you, you wouldn't have that opportunity. You, right. you would really be in your own oh, little lane. Little lane. Yep. Right, and, right. And almost isolated. And I felt, um, I agree with what some of what David was saying in terms of the fact that it is not the the black student population isn't encouraged to acknowledge their heritage here in the city of Detroit. They are not encouraged to. I mean, we have places like Concept East and the history of those men and women who went there is not talked about at Wayne State uh, unless I know. you unless someone brings it up or someone who was there comes around comes and talks about it. And, talk, and well, I could just talk about in the '80s with Von Washington the fact that. Okay, he had plays at the studio theater. He had plays at the Bonstell. And he even had a show, King Jr. at the Hillbury. Mm -hmm. But not only that, we toured. We toured. And um, I was volunteering with the program. And so, so that I could even learn more. 
uh, we toured to different schools. We did outreach into the community. And that's something that I did as a teacher. Just, you know, let's get out in the community because everybody doesn't have this. Right. And, they and still, Wayne State could do more on They that. still do. But it is, it, I think you're right in that they don't, it's not expanded beyond a play. They'll take a story. We'll have things that are smaller, maybe over the summertime and things like and something that's short lived it isn't going to be sustained or maintained in any kind of real institutional kind of way and certainly not plays specifically focused to black audiences or for black characters and performers so if you're a black kid or any kid there there were well kind of you know of the black experience so anybody could come see it and feel because we to have it. more experiences than just a baby mama oh, drama yes. i mean really we have more than you cheating on me we have so many experiences that have not you know Wayne State has a little more of the wherewithal to get that out and can and they have they hear it's a training ground for students who be willing to let's get out and do that and to me it seems like a missed opportunity to like you say when I was in school at Howard the directors the and educators the professors even the students we took opportunity we didn't need a stage, a theater. Anywhere. We would hit the yard. We would go out on the block. We would take stories, you know, we didn't care. It was, hey, let's do this scene. Hey, let's, you know, let's make something. Let's create some dance. Let's do a show. And the the Howard Players, which I was a member, but these are the things that we did there that were, that concept of self-determination. And you don't need back. a lot of money to do no. that. Because sometimes, I mean, if we needed money, my my students say let's throw a show yeah we just throw a show put something together and do it why not why and not? everything and it's it's a good training ground too when students are able to perform as much as possible yes. like you say go out on the yard or so forth and you get more training like that and the application is important and there's no experiences like it i I, re I treasure those memories where we were literally out on the streets and in the rain and the, the, the audience persisted, so therefore we would too. And, and those shows, when we finished those shows and came back afterwards and we're, you know, laughing and talking about what happened, and those memories are, are, are never going to go away. You make me think of when we were touring the teen dating violence pieces that we did. We would we were programmed to go into all these schools, but we didn't know what would meet us when mm -hmm. we get, get into these schools. And I'll never forget going over to uh, Western mm -hmm. High School. Mm -hmm. And we thought we'd be in the auditorium, but they were getting something done in that hallway. So we had to do it in this classroom, wow. which was okay, okay, because as long as you know the block hey, and stuff, you can, we can you make can, it work. You, we make it work. Yes. You make it work. And uh, I think it's laziness, too on the part of the people who could make that happen. I think, well, laziness in some regards, I think, and I probably, uh, well, I don't think I regret saying fear because fear of the unknown, they, a lot of people don't know about black theater. They don't know that there's much beyond the live stage play where the baby mama drama and all of that's going on. That's what's, that's what's going on and marketed Well, they now. don't bother to do, do the her homework. Do the homework. Yeah. Do the homework. Because so I know I know about Terrell McGrain. Oh, yes. I know about him. And I know that when they did the plays out in San Francisco, Red and Brown Water out in San Francisco, and he was out there at the time. He, he went out there to work with him and stuff. Mm -hmm. I had one of my students, a former student, students who was in um, the uh, American Conservatory of yes, Theater. Awesome. He, he was uh, in it. And then his girlfriend, who was just here not too long ago, she played the girl in the red and brown water Wonderful. out in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. She went to Spelman. <clears throat> Wonderful. Uh huh. And the she was HBCUs. getting her good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been to. I spoke at the Blackburn Center twice. Oh, wonderful. Twice. That, I was when I was uh, when I wasn't on stage. Uh, on stage, I was backstage stage managing at, at Blackburn and Crampton Auditorium. Wow. It was. These are the things that, when I was in school as a teenager and young adult, these are the things that we were taught. Look for opportunities and don't get pigeonholed. Find something that you love and do it. And 
don't be afraid of creating things. Why not? You have to create. You know, a lot of things were not set here for us. Mm -hmm. But what we do, is we find a way out of no way. Isn't that what our ancestors did? I mean, I find a way. <laughs> I want to do this. I, you know, as a child, I put on plays in my garage. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, just different things. I didn't even know really what a play was. Right. But, I, you but know, you're telling the story. The concept of it and, and everything. That was the same way for me as a child. The little three and four year old girl, grandma, would, baby, I want to do the play or do the poem or the yeah, dance or whatever. Yeah. And that kind of excitement that she gave to me, interest and encouragement, that was great. Oh, I can do this all the time. There are people who pay you to do this. Yeah. And as those realizations, as I got older, four or five and six years old, and I could see on TV, there's somebody who looks like me who's yeah. on well, TV. Well, you know, when I was coming up, the black woman that was on television, there was a show called Beulah. She was a heavy set yes. black woman. But at the theater, at the movies, I saw Dorothy Dandridge. Yes. I said, who is this? Yes. She was so pretty. Is I couldn't even beautiful? think of anybody so pretty mm -hmm. as she was. But she could act. Mm -hmm. She could portray whatever. And we saw, of course, <clears throat> there weren't a lot of black movies at the theater True. when I was going. I mean, because that theater just didn't play them. I did not know the history of black film at that time. And such a long history since the days of silent yeah. films. Oscar and, Michelle, yes, all of that. Yes, and these are the things that for me, when you live in a city like Detroit, which is predominantly black, when you have the history of the city of Detroit, which is an amazing history, why not utilize that? Why not Why not tap into that as a springboard and an encouragement to not only those who are the traditional standard play, straight play kind of theatrical world or whatever your venture is but also to inspire those youth who are coming up because our history they say we're 313 313 and 313 and we have three centuries of history here of people not just white people but all people doing all kinds of wonderful things telling stories freeing people building companies building institutions and why not and overcoming in the meantime overcoming yes and that's that's very very important and, and powerful and no two stories are the same why and these so that's things. why you have such a vast amount of th subjects yeah and and this the stage is is right there you don't need you go to Harp Plaza go go to Woodward Avenue go down to Belle Isle the band shell remember the band yes, shell would have course, great shows of course. And, oh these are the things for me that's where I get my inspiration from and when I see that there are, there's a void or there's a need, I'll, ha, I know what I can do now. I can fit myself in there and build an opportunity, even if it's not something that I can maintain myself, but I have friends. I have do you see members. yourself doing more theater? Absolutely. My husband and I founded One World Theater Company for that purpose. Really? And, uh, Tell me about it. Well, it's, it's, a, it's an infant company. We literally have just gotten off the ground and gotten our 5013 3 status. He is not an actor. He was when he was a young person. When he was in uh, growing up in the Caribbean, He put, put, they would put on plays and stuff there. But now he's mo more focused in, um, built in, in foundation building. He really is focused. He and I have thought about ways to get our foundation strong so that when we do productions 20 years from now, 40 years from now, people will still be able to point to One oh, World Theater definitely. Company. Definitely. It's building a legacy. And this is this is exactly what it's we want. It's building a legacy. Because there, be there shouldn't be a lack of black theater in Detroit. No, it shouldn't. It's a shame that there is. And uh, I, I know that there is an opportunity to do it, oh, so go for yes, it. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell you, sometimes I would start little shows right in somebody's living room and I say I don't know how we're going to do this but we're going to get it out of this living room and I've done it but you just got to work to that yes and that is so wonderful that you I'm are. really excited we're really excited um the first production that we're um looking to put up is a uh, one woman show my show uh that uh I'm creating right now so as soon as I get it done I'll find a stage and put it up and you I hope we'll be right back here to let everyone oh, know all yeah. about it oh definitely we want you to come back here and do that and it's 
It's so important. It is. Theater can be one of our best teachers. This is the thing that I have said since I was a teenager. I remember watching a show at Crossroads Theater Company. Detroit's own Pearl Clegg wrote it, Flying West. Flying West. And right. uh, I watched a man, and it was a Sunday afternoon, so he was kind of, I guess, upset. Maybe he was missing a game or something. I don't know. But he, you could see that he was not happy walking into the theater. And the show was so wonderfully played and the story was just so compelling that at the end, on the way out, the same man, and he was a big guy, but he had that handkerchief and he was dabbing at his eyes. Uh. And just in those two hours, whatever it was that he saw on that stage made the difference for him. And since then, since that day, I believe that theater can change the world. Oh, I, I know. I've seen it change people. I've seen it change and people it for the best. Mm -hmm. you know. And break down these walls that we have erected, these uh, fake walls of separation, these isms that keep people separate from one another. And you can list any of them, ageism, sexism, whatever. Racism. And we're one human race, so I don't understand that racism piece, but that's another conversation, I suppose. <laughs> Do you know, and I know we're going to be going in just a few minutes. I want everybody to stay tuned for Table Talk next Next is Table Talk. Anyway, um, I've been thinking about that a lot because race is the elephant in the room, but it's becoming the, the room. It is. And it is so big. The walls, right now. the ceiling, the floor, everything. I, and people have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, and, and with some integrity in their heart to know that. Okay, we have differences amongst each other, amongst ourselves. The 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 people who are white skinned are different from whatever. But the fact is, we're all human. We yeah. are all human. I must eat the same way as anyone else. I must have housing or uh, opportunity to live and have love. Everything that one person needs, everyone needs. And I think um, when we kind of go back to theater, it's like. This is who we are. And we're telling that story. We're showing that everyone needs the same stuff. Well, I just believe in the next two years, you're going to see a preponderance of different kinds of theater, mm -hmm. of a lot of different things going on. And I plan to be a part of that. Yes, ma'am. I mean, that's just it. And I've already got you for one of my projects. So <laughs> I, but we're going to get the projects going. So we're going to be go, uh, signing off in just a minute and we'll be, be ready for table talk and you I'm get, ready for yeah. everything this this is the this is the brave new world that we've created for ourselves oh absolutely absolutely i'm looking forward to meeting you and your husband if yes. you um need any um little advice i might be able to give you or just a little reach out I'm absolutely there. I, absolutely i'm there for you thank you so much and, and i really uh, appreciate this what, opportunity now you're at the museum right? i work at the child i'm one of the educators at the charles h wright museum but i got there because i'm an actor we used to portray characters and so that's how i got there but now i've maintained my my position there and it's wonderful i love it charles right. h wright museum Right, right, right. So we'll be, hi, every ladies and gentlemen, Yolanda Jack. You're going to be hearing a lot about her, and we will be back in just a couple minutes with Table Talk with Brenda Perryman. Thank you. Thank you. Watching WHPR TV, Detroit Live.